In this video, I'm going to explain how to bootstrap the coefficients of simple linear regression. We're going to start out by just kind of rehearsing the ideas of the bootstrap procedure, but maybe with the notation of this new context where we're going to use some numerical explanatory variable x to predict some numerical response variable y by fitting a line through this scatter plot of data. Once we kind of have this notation and the idea down, we will shift over into R where we actually perform the bootstrap operations on a real data set. And then we'll go through uh, looking at the confidence intervals for both a intercept and a slope and try to interpret them in the context of the data set we look at. So we got to remember that when we're doing the bootstrap, we are going to resample, let's say on the first time, the indices of our observations. So maybe on the first bootstrap resample, we get observation one twice, and then observation three and seven and four and 22 and n, whatever n might be, and n minus five and n minus two and maybe n again. We resample these indices uniformly with replacement and we get out a new vector of indices, the length of our original observations. And from this, we calculate whatever statistic we want. In this case, we are going to estimate beta hat naught and one, the slope and intercept. And let's just give this an extra sub index one to say this is our first bootstrapped estimated coefficients. And if we were to make a plot of that, maybe that line would look like that. I don't know. And then we basically rinse and repeat. And for the second bootstrap iteration, we take a sample of indices. It's probably going to be a different set of indices, though it may have some overlap. And from it, we calculate a new vector of coefficients. We'll give that subscript two. And maybe that one looks just slightly different because we took a different subsample of the original data. And we get our third bootstrap iteration to estimate the same coefficients from a new resample. And we keep doing this until we get down to the rth resample. Generally, we have capital R equal to 1001 or larger, but rarely anything smaller. And so we end up with capital R bootstrap estimates of the coefficients. And theoretically, all of these are going to show up on this plot something like this. And what we're going to start getting out is confidence intervals for either the slope or the intercept such that we can interpret those with some sort of confidence about the value that the true population slope or true population intercept might take on. So that was our rehearsal of what the bootstrap procedure is just kind of going to look like in this new scenario. We're just going to jump into R where we've got some stuff already set up for us. I'm going to continue using the library ggplot2 I'm going to continue using the data set about donkeys. I'm going to continue using the model where we are trying to predict the numerical response variable height with, that's tilde, shift button to the left of one, the numerical explanatory variable girth. Girth will try to explain height. And we can look at the coefficients of this model fit to our original data just by calling the function coif. Now, if we're going to use the library named boot in R, what we're going to want to do is calculate, uh, is write a function, let's call it boot underscore reg, that takes a data set and a vector of indices and returns for us the coefficients of interest. 
Lucky for us, it is not terribly difficult to do that. We've been doing it pretty much the whole time already. The only thing we got to remember to do is appropriately index our data set. Now, whenever we bootstrap, we are resampling the observations and pop quiz. Do observations show up in the rows or columns of a data frame? If you said rows, you are right. Observations show up in the rows, so we will put this vector of indices in the first position before the comma of our indexed data frame, such as to say, resample the rows and give me all blank columns. This is all we really need for our, our bootstrap uh, function in order to use the library boot. So we're just going to store an object named B, and I'm just going to use namespace qualifications here. So this is the library, and this is the function, though you could certainly load the library boot first if you wanted to. I'm just going to kind of slowly introduce more R to us as we go. Into the function named boot from the library named boot, we're going to pass our data frame. We're going to pass our function boot ray, which, oops, let's declare it. And we're going to pass some number of times to uh, bootstrap resample. It really took not much time for R to do that at all. So we will load from the library boot the function boot.ci, which takes a bootstrapped object. Um, let's start with the index equal to 1. That will correspond to the intercept since the function coif will return intercept and then slope in that order. Index 1 will be the first element of the vector we return, thus the intercept. And we'll say we want type equal the purse for the percentile confidence interval. We'll run that. It really didn't take too long for us to get this 95% confidence interval. So let's interpret the confidence interval for intercept in context of this data. We would say we are 95% confident that when girth is equal to zero, we expect the um, donkey's height to be between 48.13 and 58.24 centimeters. That is a reasonable interpretation of this confidence interval in the context of the data. We got our standard phrase for a confidence interval going. We specify what it means for this value to be an intercept. And then we say, expect the donkey's height. We're explicitly saying expect because it's not a particular donkey we're referring to, but it's kind of the average donkey whose girth is equal to zero, is between, and then you specify the two numbers yourself, and you include the units at the end. Now, I'm going to stress again, ask yourself, does that confidence interval interpretation make sense in this context? I still want you to know how to interpret it, even if it doesn't. Let's interpret the CI for the slope next. And we can extract it by just changing the index for us. Say we are 95% confident that for every one centimeter increase in girth, we expect the donkey's height to increase by between 0.37 and 0.46 centimeters. Let's put all that on one screen there. 
Same thing. We've got our standard interpretation going for a confidence interval. We've got the appropriate setup to interpret a slope. It always starts with a one unit increase of the explanatory variable. We say we expect, because this is for the average theoretical donkey, we list the meaning of the response variable, and then we quote in units the range of values for which we expect the change to occur. Now, if you would like a challenge at this point in the video, I encourage you to use the library dplyr's function filter to remove the suspected outlier and then redo all the analysis above. This will be a sensitivity analysis on the confidence intervals themselves to see how the confidence intervals for the intercept and the slope change. And remember, we have access to all of the bootstrapped, uh, resampled statistics from the element named t in the object b. So in fact, you could get the median, or let's say you could calculate the quantiles, and maybe you wanted to calculate the 50th uh, percentile, uh, yourself, you could calculate your own quantiles from, let's say, the bootstrap estimates of the slope corresponding to index 2. But further, you could make for yourself a data frame that holds all of the bootstrap estimates for the slope. And then you could make a density plot. There is the sampling distribution for the slope parameter in a linear model where you're trying to explain a donkey's height by a donkey's girth. So what we're doing now is kind of building on the tools we've seen before. We haven't gotten rid of anything we're, we've looked at earlier. We're just kind of adding it all together. And I've got a second challenge here for you in case you're interested in expanding these concepts a little bit further. Here's a challenge. Try making a scatter plot of the original data with all 1001 bootstrap estimated intercepts and slopes on the same plot. My hint is going to be use this geometry where I've left the three dots, the ellipses there, for you to try to fill in the blanks. What I'm asking you to try to recreate is the plot I drew for you at the beginning of this video, but trying to do it in R. Because you're going to be overlaying many lines at once, I really like the um, specification to make each of the lines very transparent so that the uh, shading of the lines will show you the more common regions of the sampling distribution of the line itself.